Good afternoon. It gives me great pleasure to open Google Big Ten Singapore. When I came in this afternoon just now and looking at the red, you know, and blue and green pieces of cloth outside, I said, hmm. As I walked in and looked at this, looked at this, I said, yes, it feels like a tent. And if you think about how what Julian said about sort of repurposing or reframing, innovation is about reframing. And I'm very tickled by the way Google has managed to reframe chimes. So and I'm sure that with them managing the program, the discussion this afternoon on how to enable a culture of innovation in Singapore will be robust, it will be thought provoking. And those of you here will gain insights from the many perspectives and experiences that are being shared by different people here. When we think about the important role of innovation for Singapore, let me start by talking about one of our own startups, Third Wave Power. It developed a portable, multi-function solar charger known as Empower Pad. And the first of its kind, the device has many users from helping a rural village in Indonesia with limited power supply to providing power to travelers on adventure expeditions. And just as innovation is key to third wave power's financial and, and, and environmental goals, innovation is also core to Singapore's competitive success. At Singapore's current stage of development, we can no longer compete by just being more efficient than our competitors or by implementing better than our competitors. And I didn't even dare say it's not in the speech. We're certainly not cheaper than many of our competitors in the region. So we can only compete if we innovate. Singapore's government agencies have been working to energize and support an enabling environment for innovation to take place here. And we are now seeing the fruits of the efforts in the last, I think, two decades. We have seen a vibrant technology uh, startup ecosystem that's been sort of seeded for some time now, I think, in a takeoff phase. Patents granted, for instance, have risen around 30% in the last two years from 2010 to 2012. We've also seen several Singapore startups attain international success, such as Vicky, who's here today. Vicky is an on is an on-demand video streaming website with user-generated subtitles. And Wi-Find, which focuses on indoor positioning and real-time analytics. IDA sees the data explosion as a very big opportunity for Singapore. As you know, we are seeing a massive surge of data being created every day all around the world. Just to illustrate, if bytes were buckets of water, somebody calculated that it would take just 20 weeks to fill the entire oceans of the planet with data. Now, Singapore already has the infrastructure in place, the connectivity in our hands. I dare anybody in this room to raise their hands and say they do not have a smartphone with, with them or an or a iPad. A sophisticated customer base with high expectations. And we have all these components to, already in place to be a smart nation. IDA believes that we can give our people, our businesses, our institutions the technology for them to capture, to move, and to interpret data. Beyond better decision-making and performance, people can also make new connections out of this data. In other words, to innovate new solutions and offerings that can drive economic growth, create good jobs, and improve lives. So what is the Singapore government's role in supporting an enabling environment for this smart nation? The Singapore government is encouraging open data and proactive sharing of government data sets to spur innovation. As part of this thrust, the Data Innovation Challenge was launched in June this year. The challenge sought to bring together the ecosystem that comprises industry, academia, startups, research institutes to stimulate new ideas on what could be done with data. And the government has identified almost 9,000 data sets from the public sector, as well as some from the private sector, that will gradually be made available for participants of this challenge to create innovative solutions. Innovation in science and in data is also a hands-on thing. You can't just sit there and conceptualize, you have to do it. IDA is therefore developing a tinkering environment by setting up IDA labs. We want to encourage everyone, regardless of age or roles, to try tinkering with technology, to test things, to make things yourselves. Right 
if necessary, within the office space. These IDA labs will start off as collaborative spaces for our own staff, industry participants. Uh, we hope to complement other labs in universities, research institutes and companies to enable people to get hands-on tinkering. And we hope this tinkering environment will achieve four objectives. First, to support local tech companies through the testing, assessing and promoting of local IT products and solutions. This testing, assessing, promoting builds credibility for our local startups and company products. Second, having done that, we hope that these startup technology companies will have the opportunity to demo and showcase the technology to various government bodies and industry partners. And we hope that this in turn will generate greater adoption of their technology, giving them new markets and customers. Third, we hope to bring together the ecosystem players to interoperate and develop technology standards, guidelines and reference architecture for the local IT industry. And fourth, we also want to develop tech talent by encouraging passionate students and professionals to experiment. Now, wearing one of my other hats, which is the PermSec of National Research and Development, the National Research Foundation is also encouraging the translation of research developed in the universities and our research institutions into value-creating businesses. The Singapore government has supplied a sizable budget, it's larger than a billion dollars, for the current five-year funding period to support schemes offered by quite a variety of government agencies in the name of innovation. And this includes many schemes to researchers to develop proof of concepts and prototypes. Um, there are others offered by Spring Singapore, IDA and NRF amongst others to fund startups at various stages of their journey. And notable programs in this stable include Spring's Technology Enterprise Commercialization Scheme, or TECS for short, and NRF's Technology Incubation Scheme. Now, Endomaster is one company which benefited from Spring's TECS scheme. With founders coming from our local universities, this biomedical startup, Endomaster, created a unique endoscopic robot with flexible arms that can remove stomach and colorectal tumors without any surgical cuts. Hoya, a Japanese optics technologies company, announced their investment in Endomaster earlier this year, which I think is a clear indication of, it, of this innovation's market potential. Another young company which benefited from our seed funding is Digify. Digify provides cloud-based secure documents that are strictly con uh, in a, an environment that is strictly controlled. Its services enable customers to secure, capture, and preserve secret information. And any secure document will disappear from your machine once it's read. You know, if you remember this movie that says this, this thing, this document will self-destruct in five seconds? Yeah, well, uh, that's a, I understand it's a slightly less dramatic version, but your document will disappear after you read it. Digify is currently seeking more funds to accelerate their product development, and I wish them every success. IDEA is also building the enabling environment for data innovation in other ways, such as strengthening both our hard infrastructure and our soft infrastructure. And let me explain how we define hard and soft. In hard infrastructure, we are working on how to create a national sensor network. Now, this complements the next generation nationwide broadband network that I'm sure all of you already have in your homes. Now, with a national sensor work network and the NGNBN together, we will have the ability to gather and move data nationally. And this will provide invaluable information and insights into how things can be improved for the benefit of businesses and citizens. Soft infrastructure is about the capabilities of our people, our tech talent, we need savvy, savvy technology practitioners in all our businesses and industries who understand the power of data analytics, who know what to do with data coming out of a national sensor network, whether it's you're collecting data on traffic movements, you're collecting you know, uh, data on rainfall or uh, data from our mobile telcos. You need to know what to do with da the data and that you can partner business leaders to innovate new businesses out of this data. We will help more people, young, 
and not so young, learn how to analyse big data with tech tools and to gel this with a business perspective to solve business challenges in organisations through technology and hopefully will also help these people acquire a more risk-taking mindset so that they actually tr try these new ideas. Now, I'm confident we have this talent. Our students are strong in mathematics and science. We hope to help these students acquire the relevant IT skills and to get industry exposure by connecting up with companies. IDEA also organizes yearly events such as the National Infocom Competition and National Infocom Club Awards to provide challenges that we hope will stimulate students who are interested to go further in IT. So I would like to close with two points. First, I would like to urge our budding innovators to have the resilience and the courage to seek differential competitive advantage. I mentioned Endomaster just now, which is in, biomed in the biomedical space. I see a, quite a variety of funding proposals from startups. I approve quite a few of them personally in, for the TIS scheme under the National Research Foundation. And when I see these, I do worry that many of them are pursuing Me Too ideas in highly competitive spaces. Instead, I would urge our innovators do consider pursuing areas that leverage Singapore's broader competitive strengths, such as how Wi-Fi focused on indoor positioning of, for mobile phones using Wi-Fi and Digify Digi focused on security. The second point I would like to sort of make as I end would be that I believe Singapore's strength lies in our interconnected ecosystem and the ability for us to come together to create innovative and creative solutions for the future. There are many disadvantages to being small. You know, we call ourselves a little red dot, and we made ourselves proud of it, but we are called that because we are small. And there are many disadvantages to being small. But being able to bring the whole ecosystem into one big tent is our strength and advantage. There is no other nation in the world better place than Singapore to unify policy, technology, and industry towards being a smart nation. I hope we can all work together, the industry, researchers, universities and polytechnics, government and our citizens, that I hope we can all come together and collaborate and let's write the next chapter of the Singapore story together. Thank you and do enjoy the discussions this afternoon under this big tent.